when Gaza is engulfed in flames and reduced to rubble up north along the border between Lebanon and Israel, skirmishes occur almost daily between Hezbollah forces and the Israeli military since the attack on October 7th. Hezbollah continues to wage guerrilla warfare against Israeli forces. Since when has this conflict been raging? This is a complex question to answer. However, this conflict has its roots in Israel's illegal annexation of the Golan Heights in 1981. Hezbollah was then established to fight against the invasion and occupation by Israeli forces in southern Lebanon. Like other militant organizations, Hezbollah views Israel as an illegitimate state and fights to eradicate it. Over time, Hezbollah has considered their movement as a legitimate resistance against Israel. The conflict escalated significantly in 2006, when the two sides fought in a war that lasted for 34 days, which is widely regarded as a strategic and military failure for Israel. Since then, Hezbollah's military capabilities have grown significantly, with a large arsenal of rockets and advanced weaponry. We all know the IDF possesses the most advanced armored tanks in the world. Israel has the Merkava tank, one of the strongest tanks globally. However, Lebanon's strategic position, which is mostly hilly and rocky, greatly benefits Hezbollah and, conversely, disadvantages Israel in conducting armored warfare. Additionally, Israel has to fight on two fronts, Hezbollah in the north and Hamas in Gaza, with added support from the Houthi group in Yemen. These three groups form the axis of resistance supported by Iran. According to data, Israel, Hezbollah, and other armed groups in Lebanon have exchanged at least 4,733 attacks across the border since October 7, with Israel responsible for 83% of these attacks. Meanwhile, Hezbollah and other armed groups have launched an average of five attacks daily. One of the most recent attacks by Hezbollah involved launching dozens of rockets into northern Israel on Friday, August 2nd, 2024, in response to a deadly Israeli attack in southern Lebanon that killed several civilians and a high-ranking commander and co-founder of Hezbollah, Fuad Shukar. The exchange of attacks began after a rocket hit a soccer field in the town of Maidal Shams in the Golan Heights on July 27. This attack killed 12 people and injured at least 42, most of whom were children and teenagers from the Druze community. Israel accused Hezbollah of carrying out the attack. While Hezbollah claimed responsibility for attacking an IDF base in the Golan, they denied any involvement in the soccer field attack. There are suspicions that Israel may have orchestrated the attack on the soccer field in Majdal Shams. Some accounts on social media platform X suggest that Israel fired the rocket from the Iron Dome system to justify attacking Hezbollah. This theory is bolstered by the fact that the residents of Maidal Shams in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights do not support Israel and even chased away Prime Minister Netanyahu when he visited the site. Additionally, the Druze community, which fell victim to the attack, is actually composed of Syrian residents who became Israeli citizens in 1967 when Israel occupied this region. Israel then offered citizenship to all residents of the Golan Heights, although many chose to remain loyal to Syria. Over the last decade, this community has started to openly rebel against Israel. Therefore, many argue that it doesn't make sense for Hezbollah to attack people loyal to its close ally. However, this pretext has still been used to bombard villages and towns in southern and eastern Lebanon since July 28. The IDF has targeted Hezbollah's infrastructure and weapons depots. The bombardment peaked on July 30th when two people were killed and 72 others were injured, including high-ranking Hezbollah commander Fuad Shukar. But what allows Hezbollah to continue standing its ground when Israel is far superior in terms of technology, infrastructure, and command structure? As previously mentioned, aside from the terrain, 
it's well known that Hezbollah has the capability to launch widespread rocket barrages, conduct guerrilla warfare, and use human shields. Hezbollah employs tactics by fortifying its territory near the border with four layers of defense. On the other hand, Israel opts for tactics involving airstrikes to take out high-value targets, insertion of special forces, artillery weapons, and infantry soldiers. In terms of weaponry, Hezbollah is described as having military capabilities comparable to an average European country, supported by advanced armaments. For example, in its attacks on Israel, Hezbollah uses Katyusha rockets, the most legendary rockets of the Soviet Union during World War II. Historically, Katyusha rockets have proven difficult for Tel Aviv to intercept before they deployed the Iron Dome system in 2011. Besides Katyusha, Hezbollah possesses hoop reconnaissance drones, which are said to evade Israel's surveillance and interception systems. These drones have consistently succeeded in disrupting several Israeli military posts and bases. Meanwhile, in addition to relying on air defense systems like the Iron Dome to prevent rocket attacks from Hezbollah, Israel also relies on fighter jets to strike Hezbollah's defenses. Israel has F-15 jets capable of attacking targets in any weather conditions, F-16S, and 75 units of F-35 stealth fighters, the most advanced jets in the world. Israel is the only country in the Middle East to possess these stealth fighters. Now, the question arises, how does this battle impact the situation in Gaza? From the beginning, Hezbollah, an ally of Hamas, stated that its attacks were intended to support Palestinians under Israeli bombardment in Gaza. Hezbollah's status as the most powerful member of the Axis of Resistance has effectively forced Israel to fight on two different fronts. The goal was to divert Israel's focus from Gaza to Lebanon, and it worked. As Hezbollah establishes itself as a regional power and a pillar of resistance, its influence extends to Palestine, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, where Hezbollah coordinates logistics, operations, and training with like-minded groups. However, there is one problem amidst Hezbollah's growing influence. The potential for escalation between Israel and Hezbollah is feared to lead to a wide and open war. In fact, since the conflict resumed, Israel has conducted five times more attacks on Lebanon than Hezbollah has. Unfortunately, there is no outcry from the international community regarding this. The United States has issued warnings against responding aggressively, but on the ground, Israel continues its attacks. Conversely, the United States has also stated that it will help Israel defend itself if attacked by Hezbollah. Meanwhile, Arab countries are in a dilemma in addressing the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah, warning Hezbollah not to provoke a wider war with Israel. Indeed, in Arab countries, Hezbollah as a defender of the Palestinian cause is not popular. However, Hezbollah has repeatedly stated that it will not cease its attacks on Israel unless a ceasefire is implemented in Gaza. Yet, even though it is linked to Gaza, this conflict has its own dynamics. Israel and Hezbollah have fought numerous times. Israel has long viewed Hezbollah as the greatest threat on its border and is highly concerned about the growing arsenal and foothold Hezbollah has established in Syria. The most closely monitored border in the Middle East lies between Israel and Lebanon, 